I'm sitting here at my computer, stuck in queue position 501 on this new video AI platform, which means right now hundreds of others are also trying to tap into the impressive powers of OpenAI's latest creation, Sora 2 Pro. The counter ticks down slowly, and still I'm staring at the screen, where a small white line says, generating video. At least I've moved up 10 spots. It reminds me of those department store queues when socks go on sale once a year. $2.99 instead of $3.99. And so here I am, stuck again, somewhere between burning through credits and watching the endlessly spinning loading symbol, pretending the platform is hard at work. But is it really worth spending my time staring at a black screen that promises cinematic AI magic? Meanwhile, I've now made it to position 226 in the queue. And I say absolutely, because I want to find out whether the almost laughable phrase, Sora 2 just broke the internet, holds any weight. So here's the short version of what you can expect today. I'll start with a few examples of pure Sora 2 pro text to video. Then we'll take a close look at the image-based approach, image to video, directly compared to other players like 1.2.5, Seadance Pro, and Kling 2.5 Turbo. And finally, I'll walk you through the eight lessons I've learned from building this tutorial. Let's start with text to video. I've heard this advice from many sides. Forget image to video. That's where Sora 2 is still pretty average. But text to video, that's where its full strength lies. I'd be a fool not to listen. So we'll begin with that text-driven feature. Just a quick note beforehand. I'm accessing Sora 2 Pro via API through an external video AI platform, not through OpenAI's native interface. More on that later, especially when it comes to target group restrictions. Example 1. Back in the days before computers, or at least before they became small and affordable, television was the main way to unwind. Here's a slightly reimagined visual homage to the one and only Bob Ross. Look how elegantly he lifts that trash. Very elegant. Example 2. A brand new cereal called Bacon Breakfast Blend, somewhere in Latin America. The smiling man in uniform proudly announces... Now available, the special edition. Example 3. Apparently, the BBC launched an expedition to Saturn back in the 1960s to study its ring structure on behalf of the British Empire. What you hear here is the live commentary. And here, as the crew approaches Saturn, we witness the first human attempt to enter the planetary ring system. And finally, a fourth example. A dog enjoys a roller coaster ride right by the sea. It shakes and rattles, and the dog's owner seems to feel the same way. So those were the pure text to video examples. I rendered them all in 720p at eight seconds each, then enhanced them with Topaz video. Still, each one cost me around $2.40. With Sora 2 Pro, you could technically go straight to 1080, but you have to draw the line somewhere. Otherwise, these tests get very expensive, very fast. Now onto the part that really matters. Image to video because that's the field I actually work in. Text to video may be impressive for isolated clips, but if you're aiming for visual consistency across multiple scenes, it still feels too random. Even the most detailed prompt can't fix that. But if you start with a single image, ideally with a defined end frame too, you can guide the AI much more precisely. That's where things get interesting. In this section, you'll see a direct comparison between Sora 2 Pro bottom right, Kling 2.5 Turbo, bottom left, 1 2.5, top left, and, still my top pick despite all the current hype, Seadance Pro, top right. You'll soon see why I continue to rank the Byte Dance model among the highest. Let me first explain the core idea behind this video series, Impossible Tasks. These included concepts like Broken Mirror Logic, The White Room Paradox, construction from chaos, from point cloud to reality, storyboard to motion, motion mass and reaction. 
colour recognition and the stylized bird loop. After multiple rounds of testing, it became clear that AI still has serious trouble with some of them. So I decided to focus on these six visual challenges, which I documented with detailed test runs. Broken mirror logic. We begin with a shattered mirror reflecting a person. In example one, the task sounds simple, but is actually quite tricky. The camera is supposed to move exactly 10 centimeters around the object, while the mirror remains untouched. The real action takes place inside the reflection, almost like a portal to another world. Kling 2.5 Turbo and 1 2.5 both break down halfway through. Sora 2 flat out refuses to process the prompt, no matter how I rewrote it. Unlike Sora 1, which oddly had no problem, the only platform that nailed the task exactly as described. Cedence Pro full credit for that. The White Room Paradox. The premise in example two, a completely white surface. From that starting point, the AI was supposed to create a scene with subtle depth, using only soft shadows and camera movement to reveal a figure in the space. The result? Total chaos. No matter how precise the prompt, the AIs veered off course. So I ended up switching to a semi-silhouetted image of an arctic fox as the base. Kling 2.5 Turbo and Sora 2 simply nudged the camera toward the fox without much else. One 2.5 delivered an outstanding result, exactly on brief. Seedance Pro was equally strong. From point cloud to reality, example 3 turned out to be one of the more creative challenges. The input was a diffuse point cloud, similar to those from Marble World Labs. The prompt asked the AI to reconstruct a believable space, a partially collapsed Egyptian tomb, richly decorated with carvings. Kling 2.5 Turbo took a clever route, pulling the camera out of the abstract view and transitioning into a fresh, highly stylized scene. Sora 2 made noise but delivered nothing. One 2.5 offered a transition effect, but it felt simplistic. Only Seedance Pro managed to fulfill the prompt completely and convincingly. Storyboard to motion. I'd already explored this in a previous video. In example four, the idea was to animate an entire nine panel storyboard, keeping each scene within its defined frame. Every panel had its own written description. Kling 2.5 Turbo scrambled the details. Elements were misplaced, repeated or misinterpreted. One 2.5 wasn't much better, and Sora 2, a total miss. Cedence Pro handled the challenge best, even though some scenes still had room for improvement. But in terms of structure and consistency, it clearly led the pack. One of the most challenging tests remains motion, mass, and reaction. Example 5 tackles exactly that. ChatGPT sums it up like this. A tennis player charges toward the ball, sand flying in the air, warm backlight cutting across the scene, cinematic, intense, focused. That's the core of it. A split second of maximum force and concentration. My goal was simple. The ball should bounce off the racket in a physically accurate way, flying in the right direction with believable weight. Kling 2.5 Turbo created two contact points, racket, and sand. Not good. In Seedance Pro, the ball moved unnaturally, almost self-propelled. One 2.5 started off great and ended well. But where did the ball go? Swallowed by the racket. And Sora, too. Once again, task refused. Lastly, something a little lighter, but just as important. Example 6 shows the stylized bird loop. A small, grumpy-looking cartoon bird with puffed feathers, flapping its wings, chirping and glaring at the camera. The key here was not realism, but expressive 2D movement and character consistency. Kling 2.5 Turbo did a solid job. Cedence Pro went the extra mile. The bird felt alive. The wing motion had proper weight and rhythm. One 2.5 lost control. Everything was overblown. Sora 2's version fell flat. The wings looked copy-pasted, stiff and the animation lacked motion and detail. Even the branch didn't move. So that wraps up the core segment, though I could show you dozens more examples. 
At some point, though, it all becomes repetition. Still, one last clip before we move on. The man from the cartoon storyboard. The first frame, essentially. Kling 2.5 Turbo followed the prompt correctly, but added a clearly visible white outline around the man's hand as he flashes the victory sign. Seedance Pro not only matched the style, it analysed and adapted it before generating a perfect variation. 1 2.5 took things even further by animating additional elements within the scene. And Sora 2, just take a look for yourself, not usable. Now for my verdict on Sora 2 and the key lessons from this entire test series. As always, I've summarised it in a compact brief overview. Let's start with the elephant in the room. Is Sora 2, or more precisely, Sora 2 Pro, really that ultimate platform everyone's been waiting for? The one that leaves all others in the dust? Based on my tests, the answer is a very mixed one. Lesson 1. If you're working with Sora 2's text-to-video feature, you do have a wide range of creative tools at your disposal. You can generate striking clips purely from a well-written description, define the style, combine elements, push toward photorealism, and more. But it's also where things start to fall apart. The very next clip, even with the exact same prompt, will likely be interpreted differently. Without a reference image to anchor the logic, consistency across sequences becomes almost impossible. Of course, general cultural knowledge can help, for instance if the character is well known. But then we face a different problem. Do I really want to deal with potential copyright issues just because I described visuals that might fall under trademark protection? Not a chance. So for me, text to video isn't a viable option if I'm aiming to tell a longer, coherent story across multiple scenes. Lesson 2. Yes, image to video technically works in Sora 2, but in practice, the results consistently favour the competitors, especially Seedance Pro and 1 2.5. And I'm not basing this on just a couple of one-off tests. We're talking about substantial side-by-side -side comparisons here. I've seen the same patterns reported by other YouTubers as well. Lesson 3. If censorship is your thing, Sora 2's flagged by content checker has you covered. At first, I assumed the problem was my prompt, so I fine tuned it over and over until I finally ended up with a single neutral instruction just a camera movement. Even then, I got the same rejection error validating the input. On the version of Sora 2 I'm using, which is accessed through the FAL.ai platform, it basically means that any image containing a visible face or person gets instantly flagged as unusable. I even asked ChatGPT what this was all about. And here's what OpenAI's own model replied. Welcome to the world of Sora 2. Powered by cinematic promise. Throttled by semantic paranoia. That line says more than I ever could. Lesson 4. Google already showed with VO3 how not to treat a global user base. And strangely, OpenAI seems to be following the same playbook. Why this selective access policy for different user groups? It's hard to understand. The logic seems to be generate hype, then monetize through controlled API access via third-party platforms to recoup development costs. But if that's the plan, why not just open up the API and start generating revenue from day one without splitting users into first and second class? Lesson five. Prompting remains a fragile affair, especially with Sora 2. Even if you stick to the official guidelines or rely on a carefully crafted master prompt, there's still no guarantee the result will behave as expected. One misplaced word, like ship, and the entire scene can fall apart or spiral off into its own random direction. My advice? Always build around a master prompt. It's not a silver bullet, but at least it gives you a framework to work from. Lesson 6. Start and end frames are a game changer. With them, you can set up a clear visual corridor without spelling everything out in text. That saves time, stress and money because everything in between becomes easier to shape. Without those anchors, you're left fiddling endlessly with partial outcomes that rarely line up. Lesson 7. I've long been a fan of Seedance Pro and I'm genuinely curious to see what ByteDance has in store for the next update. But now, 
With one 2.5 from Alibaba Cloud, there's finally some real competition on the horizon. You've seen the results yourself. Lesson 8. If you're like me, testing deeply rather than superficially. You know that consistency is everything. That means repeated scenarios. Same inputs, multiple tries. Only then can you start to uncover how each platform handles physics, colour behaviour, style transformation and interpretive logic. But that kind of testing costs real money and time. Most platforms are still shaky when it comes to reliability. What we really need is a draft mode, something basic, low res, just to show whether the AI even understands what we're asking. Luma's Dream Machine is already taking big steps in that direction with Ray 3. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI, now you know.